Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Good morning. Whew, what a time. So much to tell you. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I just changed my shirt, so I was just making sure everything is okay right here. Not sure. Sorry if anything happens. Good morning and happy Tuesday. I'm so glad you made it. You know, I uh, my mom's not popping on today because she's having her shot, so we know that we're missing her. But Anita, you are here. Have a wonderful day, all my friends. You are so sweet. I wonder if you're going to be going off soon to visit your buddy again that you hook with sometimes. It was so nice to know that you were out doing that the other day. Sheila, good morning in Benton City, Washington. A beautiful and sunny day. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. We're not getting the sun here in Connecticut today, but um, maybe tomorrow. It's supposed to be bitter, bitter, bitter cold this week again. And then over the weekend, it's going to get warm again. So that's so nice for people who are working that over the weekend, they can... They can look forward to having some sunny days. Heather, good morning. I forgot to write and ask you, do you want to come over this afternoon? I would love to see you and that little boy. Kirsten, I owe you your order. Just so you know, I did not forget. I need to dye um, those sets. I'm having a real issue right now. I'm going to say it out loud. I know trade secrets and all that. Um, just so you all know, monk's cloth is a huge, huge problem right now. Um, and I'm, I'm waiting for my door order for the wool, so that's not a problem, but it's taking exceptionally long for some reason. Um, they normally ship the next day, so I am on that. Hopefully I can dye that tonight. Don't think I forgot. Um, Kirsten is in Vermont. The snow is falling. It's finally melting a bit. Oh, eight degrees, man. Whoo, that's rough. Robin, good to see you. I'm getting your stuff out too. Snowed overnight. You're in Wisconsin. I know that. Yep, you wrote Wisconsin but it should melt by the afternoon. Yeah, I think that's what we're getting now is we're getting um, bad, cold, snowy, you know, squalls um, that then just disappear. So I'm kind of okay with that. It is March after all. Good morning, Linda. Oh, I see your St. Patrick's Day clover. Good thing you did that. I have, I have something to uh, say later about that. I'm still fooling with my clothing here. It's, I'm super uncomfortable. Um, oh, Linda, so happy to see you. And Amber, happy to see you. You got your rugs, and that was so fast. I'm so glad. That'll be exciting to see how that all transpires. Oh, uh, Heather saw robins in the yard yesterday. I bet the cats were crazy, right? That's what they live for, is for those kinds of crazy, crazy chase, ch chase, kill, capture moments. Um, luckily, I just have one of our cats was hit by a car a couple years ago. Farmer Bramble, that was, poor little thing. He came all the way from the Netherlands with us, and then he got killed in Hampton, Connecticut, of all places. But um, we still have Pitter Pat, the cat, and luckily she's not that much of a hunter. She needed her buddy, Farmer Bramble, to do, like, the heavy work. Um, she's she's more of a, of a powder puff, so luckily I'm not going to see too much of that. I bet your two, Heather, will go for it, though. They're, they're pretty wild. Penny, good morning in cold North Carolina. It is dreary here, too. You are not alone. Linda in Massachusetts, great to see you. Happy Tuesday. All the buddies are on. C. Burdett, good morning from Colorado. Good morning to you. So happy to have you. I'm glad you're there. Cheers to coffee time, Chrissy. I am glad you've got your, what was the last thing you got? The swatch set with the mystery pattern. We'll show the mystery pattern, so it's not like it's the most amazing thing ever, but it's a great hit or miss pattern, I think. I think it'll be fun for this time of year. Cindy is on. Good morning, Cindy. Happy Tuesday. Oh, there you go, Linda. I hope so. I'm going to do my best to brighten Janice. Overcast this morning in Minnesota. Janice, I hope your foot is doing better. I hope it's not laying you up too much. That was sad news that you got hurt over the weekend. Jennifer, good morning. Good to see you. I love all the posts you make with your group. That is so exciting. The Atha group there is so exciting. Oh, there's a blizzard in Colorado on Sunday. See, that's different for us because it's warming up again here. But we'll just see the give and take. So, you know, it seems like when something good happens in one place, something bad happens in another, and then it reverses. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a geographical uh, puppet show, right? You pull the string here, and this happens, and maybe it's just called weather, right? If I was more knowledgeable, maybe it's just called the weather. Doreen, good morning, good to see you, and Donna, good to see you. Hey, before I forget, the Zoom information for tomorrow is already on the description of this video. So if you want to Zoom with us tomorrow, you are so welcome to do that. You do not have to be working on a project. I will not put you on the spot. 
Um, your house does not have to be clean. There could be chaos behind you and we will still love you. You don't even have to put your camera on. But if you want to be there and listen to the chat, we talk about uh, hooking and projects and, and also just chat. It's nice to have the companionship. So you are everybody is certainly welcome to log on to Zoom. That information is here and I will post it in our Facebook group, which is Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club. I'll do that a little bit uh, later after the video. All right, Cynthia, hello, hello, Cynthia. And C welcome back, right, because you couldn't make it yesterday, C Cynthia, so it's gl I'm glad you're back live today. Cindy, hello in A sunny Arizona. Oh, good, you just discovered the channel yesterday. Well, you are so welcome, and there are so many nice people. You see a bunch of the nice people on right here. Everybody is so nice in this group. We are so lucky to have found each other. Teresa, good morning, how are you doing? Good to see you. And Brandy, you are on. Oh, I'm so glad. Good morning, Brandy. Good morning, Martha in Ontario. Oh, good to see you. I know I'll see you tomorrow on Zoom, Martha. April, good morning. Good to see you. Happy Tuesday. Debbie, good morning. Happy Tuesday. And Carol, my love, you are on. Happy Tuesday. We have got to get that winery date in place with Liz. Oh, Brandy's in Texas. You have finally, you're ha finally having spring. I am so glad. Texas needs some good news, right? You'll take any any good sign, any positive sign. So I'm going to, um, oh, Morgan, good morning. Good to see you. Debbie, happy Tuesday in upstate New York. So glad to see everybody. I'll keep looking at the thread, but I want to start talking about some of the things of today because I have a bunch of things of today. Oh, you were having trouble getting on again, Carol? Oh, boy, I hope it's not me. I hope it's just the crazy internet. Um, a couple of things. Before I forget, this is an important one. I'm going to experiment starting on April 1st, April Fool's Day. I'm going to start running this live show, same days as always, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then, of course, on Friday, we do our cocktail night instead of our coffee night. I'm going to start running it at 12 instead of 1130. I want to see how that goes. And the reason, I don't want to disturb our core group who is always here. I don't want to betray you. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to upset things. Um, but I do notice that after the live show, by the end of the night, about 350 more people have watched the show. And I'm just wondering if those people, because a lot of them keep expressing that they would like to be able to interact live and write comments as we go along, as we do. Uh, and I'm just wondering if those people are maybe at work and are having a lunch break at 12, if, if only if you're on Eastern Standard Time, like I am, of course. Um, but I thought, let's give it a shot. Let's, give, let's see how it goes for one week starting uh, April 1st, which I think is Wednesday. A um, nice clean date. And let's see how it goes. I don't want to mess up your schedule for those of you who have always been here with me. Um, but I thought it would be so nice if some of the other people, the a few hundred people that watch later might get a chance to get on live sometimes too. So I thought, let's try that as an experiment. If it's upsetting, we will revert back to our old ways. Um, but let's see how it goes. I thought that would be a good chance for some um, other people to, to try to get on. Now listen, tomorrow is Zoom. So for those of you who want to Zoom and get together that way, we will be together that way. Uh, also 1130 Eastern Standard Time. Um, but tomorrow is also St. Patrick's Day. And it was the birthday of my little grandmother who was such a little elf and a little devil at the same time, her bright, shining Irish eyes. I super miss her on her birthday. She was such a little crazy firecracker, tiny, crazy firecracker. But um, for St. Patrick's Day, I won't be with you live tomorrow because I'm, I'll be on Zoom. And I always want to give you something special uh, on special days. So I just thought of this half an hour ago, and it's not ready yet, but it will be ready in a few minutes as soon as I'm done with this. I drew, you know, I had found when I was in Vermont this weekend, I found this book at an antique store called Collecting Irish Stamps. Like, you know, God knows why I picked it up, but I thought, oh, interesting. You know, I was looking through it and I thought, oh, there's some pretty stamps in there. That's interesting. Weird things uh, become interesting to me, but I was looking at some of the designs from 1922, 1940, and then some of the designs for the national stamps uh, for Ireland in 1968 really caught my eye. So I just drew interpretations of two of them, two sort of mythical, traditional Irish designs of stamps. And these are going to be on the page, ribboncandyhooking.com, and also on our Facebook page, Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club, um, in about an hour. And they will both be free patterns. I'll keep them free. I'll just keep them free. They'll just be free patterns. They're just, these are the drawings, right? And then I'll show you my drawings. These are the ones I did. Let me see if I can focus in. This sort of mythical bird, right? 
with a kind of like colorful armor and the color versions will be on there too and then this guy which is like a, a winged cow isn't that neat and then they show a different uh, color variation where is it here for the cow uh, in a later year. They put them out again with a different color. But anyway, those colors will be on there. So I drew those up real quick, like 10 minutes ago. Um, so both of these designs for the winged cow and the bird, and they say Erie for Ireland. That's, that's actually not a correct thing to say, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I just found it out. But I'm going to put those up for free um, as soon as the show is over. All right. So if you feel like doing those, you know, those would be great simple beginner rug hooking designs, punch needle designs. Or if you're more into the Russian punch, um, those would be nice small designs. So they're just there. If you're interested, you could pattern out the background, do something exciting and K facet patterning in the background. Or if you like them just the way they are, you want to hook something fast in Irish colors, you can download those, transfer those, and do something in old Irish stamp um, for St. Patrick's Day. They, I think they'll make great rugs. Oh, hey, Mag B in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Great to see you. Beverly, great to see you. You are you are not late. You are there. And you are on time. So just, I didn't know this. I just want to add this as a side thing. The word Erie, which is Irish for Ireland, um, is the name of the island and sovereign state. But um, the reason it is offensive, apparently, is because the term Ireland applies to the whole of, of the island, and the English people... Uh, may have seized on the term eerie because it gave them an excuse not to say Ireland. They wanted to avoid describing the southern part of Ireland as, I as Ireland, so eerie um, demarcates the fact that it is the 26 county team that we're talking about. So in other words, it makes it easy to justify owning the northern part of Ireland uh, if you don't recognize it as one place. So I did not know that. Um, I think it's okay to still say the word. I don't think it's one of those super bad words. But anyway, those two designs are free for you and they're there if you feel like working on something new. I, I can't believe I didn't think of this. I just thought I'd have to do it tonight and I could give you some surprise tomorrow, but then I remembered it was Zoom tomorrow. So, whew, you know, it's fate and destiny in the universe. Thank God I picked up this crazy Collecting Irish Stamps book for no reason because that's the universe at work saying, you're going to need this like the day after tomorrow. And I didn't even know. Crazy, right? So something even more important before we go into our commentary for the day. Do you remember I showed you this remarkable masterpiece? This is one of my finds. Uh, I found this at one of the Queechy antique stores in Vermont this weekend. This is not a hooked rug. I'll show it to you close up. This is a beautiful felt tapestry. And it is felted. Do you know felted? It's, it's not using a hook. It's not, well, I was going to say it's not using a needle. But it's using a little kind of stabby uh, needle like a wiry little thing it's different than the things we do you're not pulling something through a backing uh, or pushing something through a backing like you are with punch needle or hooking you're using your needle to sort of merge or meld um, like roving the sort of raw uh, wool into the background and making it one textile one piece so take a look at this extraordinary design um, this is by uh, Nasa Rousseau and she is, she is in Vermont, and I happened to find this at an antique store, and that is how I found her. Uh, this is something that she handmade. This is probably one of my best finds ever. Um, so I've been talking to her. Luckily, she has a beautiful uh, Etsy shop. So this is, she sells kits and designs for needle um, felting with roving, and she also sells the most beautiful ro roving. I just want to mention that her Etsy shop is called Tapestry Needle Felt, and she is in Bradford, Vermont. Now, the reason I'm, I'm making such a big deal out of this, I'm not just bragging that I have this and you don't, although I'm very glad that I have this. Um, I wrote to her because when I looked at her Etsy store, I could see that her designs are so um, stunning and suitable to rug hooking. So, if you look at her store and you're a needle felter, you're all set. You can buy her designs right now. But I'm working with her now on offering, uh, on the Ribbon Candy Hooking site, her designs to hook so that I could put on backing for you, whatever you hook with, rug warp, monk's cloth, linen, whatever, but using her designs. So her designs are just, if you have a chance to go and look at her Etsy store, um, flavors of the past, kind of medieval gardens, very shape-driven, um, some touches of sort of Greek and... Um, uh, a little bit of a fantasy, mythological kind of really uh, historic style, rich, rich, rich colors. 
and one of the really interesting things um, about her site, I ordered her book, which I'll show you as soon as it comes. We'll look at that together. It's a book about roving, but to look at the patterns in the wool because we're still talking about wool. We're talking about wool roving. It is a nice thing to take a break sometimes from hooking and punching on your wrist, on your hands. It's nice to take a break, and it's nice to think about the possibility of doing something different like roving. Um, needle felting. So I would never have anything to do with that because that's her business. But uh, we're going to overlap in that I'm going to do some of her designs, offer them as patterns for you to rug hook or punch needle on a much bigger scale. So that's coming up and we'll talk about that more. But I just wanted to let you know that was happening. And I just wanted to mention the name of her Etsy store, Tapestry Needle Felt in Bradford, Vermont, because you can start looking at her patterns. You can buy her books cheaper. She has two books on needle felting. You can buy them cheaper on her page from her than you can on Amazon. So don't even bother with Amazon for this one. I'm super excited because she seems like a super nice person. And I absolutely love her work. A real tap, colorful tapestry feel. And what I was going to say is uh, not, not the roving, although the roving too is like 100% wool, but I bought from her also a beautiful sampler of silk. And it's hand dyed silk. And she does the natural dyeing. You know I'm a chemical pig and I do all chemical dyeing. She does the natural dyeing and she is getting exquisite colors with this silk. So I ordered one of the silk samplers so I could try working one of her pieces small scale with the silk and see how that comes out. So this um, conversation represents a lot of possibility and just something new, some new options for you. I think it'll be super fun to see some new options. Her work is very, very different than mine. Um, and the other people who I license, like the Schmetz Pet that does all that funny animal stuff, and of course Nancy Thomas, uh, very di she's very different than all of us that are in the store already. So it'll be a really, really great uh, fusion, I think. Something, something new and different. Let's see. You had to get a book from the library about Kay Facet because you refer to him so, oh, I'm so sorry, Robin. I, you know, you're so right. I say Kay Facet all the time like it's an adjective, a noun, a verb, an adverb. <laughs> I, I, I just love him so much. I lost my mind. I know I've said this before when he did a book signing in Amsterdam when I was living in Amsterdam. I mean, it was like the Beatles. It was like they had risen from the dead. They were together. They, you know, were 25. And I just lost my mind when I saw him. He is such a fantastic artist, needlepoint artist, quilter, designer, decorator. He's just unbelievable. Uh, he doesn't do a lot with rugs, weirdly, but you can still be inspired by all of the other things he does with color. And he makes the most beautiful fabric. It's called needle felting. It's fun to make. Needle felting is super fun, Brandy. It is super fun. It's just something different. It's another thing for your bag of tricks. I know it was a fortuitous find, Linda. It was like meant to be because it's not an antique. I'm going to put it up. I'm not going to use it on the back of my chair like it's a you know, piece of upholstery. I'm going to treasure it and keep it real careful. But um, I was very happy to find her, her shop, this design. It was, again, the universe was, was lining things up in a beautiful way to make um, the future even better. Cindy says, can you use wool yarn in needle felting too? Great way to use up leftovers. You know, I think that's going to be um, a question for Naira. I don't know the answer to that. When I have felt, I've only ever used um, roving, like that, you know, sort of unspun, just uh, cotton candy, right? Cotton candy looking stuff. I've only ever used that, but I haven't done a lot of felting. So I'm not sure. Um, she might be on the thread to answer, or else she will be will be talking about her a lot in the future. But that would be a beautiful crossover if you can use different things. I was also thinking about the possibility, very abstract, but imagine if you were doing something with the combo of um, needle felting, hooking. We've been talking about this with the British artists, right? They're kind of um, crazy fusions of different mediums, and you're basically getting a textile collage. But there would be ways of attaching needle felting to a backing, um, using roving to felt part of a design and hooking the rest of it. I mean, that is completely within the bounds of possibility and ca anybody's capability. That's pro. Okay, so that is the link that just turned up for ribbon candy hooking for the two, if you click on that and save it for later, for the two um, Irish stamps I did. That link there will get you to the two free designs right here. So those are on that link that just came up in the thread. So let me see, Midnight Hazel, yes, felting is fun. So some of you have already done felting, and I'm not surprised because those of you who love uh, wool, colors of wool and having it in your hands, the tactile quality of wool, will also be interested in felting. Um, but again, with, uh, with Naira, I'm gonna be doing her designs as rug hooking designs. So if you are a pure hooker puncher, 
I just want to make those designs, which are exquisite, available to hook and punch, not just to felt, but to hook and punch, because I think it's going to open up the field for those of us who don't felt and who, who just want to hook and punch her designs. Um, it's, it's just going to sort of multiply the happiness. Yes, you can. Okay, so Janice says, yes, you can use wool yarn for needle felting. Thank you, Janice. Um, because Naira in her store, needle, sorry, tapestry needle felt, she has beautiful yarn samplers, silk and wool. I got the silk one because the colors, you know, the, the natural dye on silk comes out a little different than the natural dye on wool. And on silk, for me, it sang even more. It reminded me of like ancient kimonos and embroidered fans inside golden frames, that kind of rich, a uh, little bit of a nubby quality. So let's see, Cindy says, oh, Cindy made two quilts with K-facet fabrics and they're your favorites. Uh, me, me too. I did, when we lived in Amsterdam, I did bed curtains all the way around both uh, my bed, which was a four poster and Teddy's little bed. And then I sold all those panels. Isn't that crazy? And I, I get in su such a crazy mode sometimes. I sell everything and it's a heartbreak. But yeah, his material's beautiful. You are welcome, Linda. I'm glad I'm glad if anybody uses those uh, patterns, it was worth the time. Uh, Brandy says, yes, you can uh, pull the strings apart and rough them up. Very nice. Very exciting. So this is all great. We could talk about this for another 10 minutes, no doubt. Um, and I just want to project forward to tomorrow because for those of you... Uh, also, Naira um, has done stuff in Rug Hooking Magazine. Um, this is one of the issues that she had something in, right? This is June, July, August 2017. I happen to have this one like right in my hand, so I was able to pull this out. I just want to show you, because she's done a few articles. This is a needle felting article that she did. I'm sorry, I keep saying Naira. Nasa Russo, um, right here. Don't let me screw it up again did this one here and I think there's another one of hers in spring 2017 which wasn't right in my hand and I think there's more but again we're going to be talking a lot more about her because she is a proper 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 artist um, and I think we're all going to be interested in in her designs her colors and her stuff so uh, Rogue Hooking Magazine if you belong to their book club which I don't think it costs anything to belong to their book club I know I belong to their book club um, you get first whack when new books come out, and this book just came in the mail yesterday. So we're going to be looking at this book tomorrow. It literally came out yesterday. It is a book called Punch Needle. This a different punch needle. Now, we've reviewed the Amy Oxfords many times. Um, I know all about what's going on with the Amy Oxfords, so I'm not even going to get into that. I've seen all the social media stuff about the cloned needles. If you want an Amy Oxford needle and you're shopping for an Amy Oxford needle, make sure that it says Amy Oxford on the bottom, bottom line. But this book is by Simone... Uh, Voy, Voy, Voivoden, I think Voivoden, Voivoda, she might be Dutch, that would be like Voivoda, um, Punch Needle, but anyway, I'll be rever uh, reviewing this book tomorrow, literally just, I just got it yesterday, because it was on like a pre-order, thank you Brenda for that tip, I think you're the one that sent the tip on that, you sent me the tip on everything, um, but today, let's have a quick look before it gets too late, oh, thank you Midnight Hazel, um, Silk is luscious. Um, please thumbs up this video, share, like all those good things that I always forget to say. Yesterday I brushed off this great, didn't brush off, I, 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 I raced over this great find from one of the Vermont stores, the Happy DeFranza Rug Hooking book called Hooking Fine Gifts. Now this is, I just want to review this book with you really quickly and show you what's in here because this is going to be a great book for a beginner. We're switching, switching trails uh, real quick here. Uh, 16 Projects for Rug Hooking by Happy DeFranza and Steve DeFranza. Now, I'm always interested in Happy DeFranza because I know you know this, but I met her uh, at Beauport, which is a beautiful house on Cape Ann, the north of Boston in Massachusetts, and she was restoring the famous Hutchinson rug called the Mercedes James Hutchinson rug called uh, the Magic Rug. She wasn't restoring it. She was remaking it. It was beyond. It was beyond. So... It was very nice to see the original, but it was beyond. Um, and she was remaking it in the colors that it originally was. And she did a beautiful tour and lecture that day. This was um, the spring before last, because of course last year nothing happened. Uh, and she was so lovely. And I was just so impressed by her knowledge and her kindness and her warmth and her friendliness. You know, sometimes you meet people, particularly in these kinds of settings where they have expertise and you're watching and asking questions, where there's a weird, like, you know, theatrical fourth wall where you feel like a boob and uh, you're afraid to approach. She was so kind and so uh, open and sweet and, again, forthcoming. I always appreciate that in people when people are forthcoming 
and looking to help other people. Um, she was just like that. She's great. Um, so I, I love reading about her, her work. I wish there was more of it. Um, I think her husband Steve passed away a while ago, but he worked very closely with her, and of course he's the co-author on this book. Um, they're both such artistic people, and he seemed to take her career as a rug hooker super seriously and bring her to the next level by pushing her uh, to do her best work. What I love about this book, there are 16 beautiful projects in it. What I love about this book is that Happy, and I think she's called Happy because she is always happy, um, she says things that are worth saying and hearing again. Whether you're a beginner, it's these are things that I come, I come to skip over because I think of them as intuitive. She says the things that you need to hear at the beginning. So I think, I think of this as a great beginner's book. So great for beginners and or great for anyone who loves the 16 projects in this book. They are on the like classy side. You know, they're not like corny country. They're not that corny is the same as country, but you know what I mean. Um, they're, they're exquisite. I'll show them to you real fast, which means we're going to run over a little bit. Privies and Prims, hello, good to see you. Um, Privies and Prims, just so you know, um, I said earlier, starting on April 1st, we're going to experiment with running the show on at, at noon uh, Eastern Standard Time, just because I think it might be an easier time for people to hop on. So Happy starts this book by saying that she does a little bit on the history of, of hook drugs. She handles it in a different way. She doesn't do the whole thing with uh, thrums and boats and England. She doesn't do that. She because we, we have more information since then that has sort of changed our idea of the, when the first rug hooking was. She, she handles it differently and she just talks about how, I'm reading a uh, direct quote, traditionally hooked rugs were not created as art. They were fashioned out of woolen scraps, of practical use, floor color coverings. Um, and she starts there. And she says, Steve and I became, Steve, her husband, became enthusiastic about rug hooking over 30 years ago when they purchased their first home. And like their 19th century ancestors, they realized they needed rugs for the floor. So their combined training in art history and design um, got them into rug hooking and immediately designing their own patterns, uh, which is something she did prolifically. She said, we had borrowed from traditional forms, like uh, not just rugs for the floor, because she's about practicality, uh, forms like chair seats, brick covers, also rugs, everyday things, uh, and making up designs for them for this book that would be um, look like something that took forever to make, but these projects are actually quite manageable and um, not super time consuming, not excessively time consuming. So she talks a lot to the beginner about what you need to know, and it's super helpful. Um, she talks about how when you're approaching a project, particularly if you're not starting with a kit, I think this is a really good uh, point. She says, your taste has already been conditioned. In other words, like your taste is set. Um, you might sometimes go outside the bounds of your colors and your natural taste. I might sometimes go to yellow and blue, which are my least favorite, just to stretch myself. But essentially, your tastes are already set. And we know that, she says, she's saying, the color choices we've made in terms of selecting our clothing, our furnishings, all your things around the house, you've already made choices about color. So you already have experience with choosing colors. So when you approach a creative project like a hooking or a punching or a felting project, um, you need to trust yourself and remember that you already know more about color than you think because you've been making choices about colors for years. So don't, don't get all deer in the headlights and um, worried that you're going to make bad decisions. You have to trust yourself when it comes to things like that and think about the choices that you've made so far with, for example, your clothing, your home decor, your curtains, the other things that you've chosen around your house. She talks about um, hooking, just how do you hook? How does it work? She uses phrases that I haven't heard before that I think are super helpful. Um, this isn't one of them, but she talks about how some people, very relaxed, hook, I hook like, I tend to hook like this, and other people do what's called palming, which is have the hook in your palm, and you're kind of pulling it through different motion, different style of handling, different technique. But she talks about the different techniques, and she makes really solid points, like, for a beginner, hooking is not done in back to forth rows like needlepoint, right? Because hooking, she says at the beginning, is a derivative of earlier needlepoint, except they were using a needle and we come to use a hook uh, or a punch. So she's saying it's not done in back and forth rows like needlepoint. It's done by um, filling areas like a paint by number, right? 1950 paint by numbers came out, 1950 rug hooking is very popular. You're filling a spot and it's, it's handled differently thus. And she talks about 
outlining something in what's created, uh, and I've never heard this word before, creating a fence, which is a really good way to think about it, to define an area and then coloring that area in or the area on the other side, but creating an outline that is what she calls a fence. With, I think that's a really clever way of um, communicating that. And she talks about different methods that I don't know, because I'm not like a fine, fine hooker, right? I, I'm not Pro McGowan certified. Um, these are things probably that you know if you are. But she talks about a method called sawtoothing, uh, which I think is really clever. And as soon as I show you what it is, you're going to go, oh, obviously, right? So she's hooking with finer cuts. So she's hooking with threes and fours. She's not hooking primitive and eights. So she says sawtoothing is a method of shading with narrow strips. Loops of one color are pulled up in between those of another color. Usually the colors are close in value, but in this photo the colors contrast hugely. So you can see they're exaggerated. And she's showing you this is one way that you can shade. You can sawtooth. You see that how she's, it's a very graphic blending. This is, uh, this is obviously the work of someone who does have a lot of art experience. She's doing, um, she's not doing the soft blending one shade ombre to the next color or value. She's, she's pixelating it, right? She's pulling through some, and she's saying normally she would do it in a more subtle way with two closer colors. And that would be more like the Pearl McGowan school of shading, like invisible to the eye, it becomes almost photographic realism. Uh, but she talks about sawtoothing in great, Details. She also talks about this method called fingering, is a method of shading in, um, that word just threw me because I thought, uh-oh, in which the loops of one color are hooked between the rows of another color. I'm going to show you rather than tell you of a close value. So she's showing you the shape of like a strawberry, something like that, right? Some kind of a berry or a bud. Um, so this method is not sawtoothing. This method is called fingering. And she goes into great detail on these two methods. Um, you know, for those of you that are looking to shade and looking for explanations on how to shade that are very concise, because um, shading obviously is, is a big thing. This is something that you could, you could improve on and perfect over the course of your lifetime. But if you're looking for quick definitions on how to achieve um, fades and um, shading effects, this is a really good book for that. She's telling you these technical things in a nutshell, which you don't always get. You get lots of opportunities to hear long-winded versions. But if you're just like, just give me it in a nutshell so I can get my head around it and approach, this is a good book for that. So, and she also talks about things like hooking taboos, things you should not do. It's a really interesting book. She talks about maintenance, maintenance like upkeeping and cleaning your rugs. I'm just going to finish this. So I'm going to go for two more minutes. And so it's a lot of how-to. It's a lot of basic stuff. It's, it's, it's really good for that. And then she goes into the projects. She's got 16 projects at the end, like this roaster, rooster brick cover. Isn't that nice with the lamb tongues? I'll show you that in color. Um, she, like she said at the beginning, she's doing chair pads, stuff like this. So if you like the style and you're interested in a really concise history slash, um, oh, I got to read what you're doing too. Oh, I got to read that, Martha, because I love cloisonné stuff. And I know it has, wait a minute, let me finish this. I'm going to get myself distracted and in trouble, right? This is the kind of stuff that she's showing you. These are the projects in this book. And she gives you patterns for them and ideas for color. This is the one that's on our thumbnail today, the Baba Black Sheep. She's very well known for her sheep designs and her cat designs. But she also does good stuff like this, right? Patchwork inspired stuff. Let me show you one more of her color pages. Oh, this is real good. You know, let's start with this tomorrow. I, want, I don't want to race through. I want to show you just a couple more of her designs and a couple more things that she says in this book that I think are interesting and useful. We'll start tomorrow's episode with that, and then we're going to switch to that new book that just came out, Punch Needle. That's for tomorrow. Uh, I've got to read what you read in the meantime, though. I do mostly, uh, Privies and Prim says, I do mostly Punch Needle, so I have to remember to check in tomorrow. Okay, yep, great, please do. And Martha says, Cloisonne, which is that beautiful sort of enamel, um, Asian t style, you know, you see pots and letter holder handles, and it's that glittering kind of colorful enamel, and in between each piece um, is like, Martha's saying it's called a fence, which makes a lot of sense. It's a raised piece of metal that then the enamel will fill when it's poured in. Um, very, very collectible. Uh, Cloisonne stuff can be crazy expensive, but um, which is enamel poured into an enclosure, yep, like filling in a space and rug hooking, exactly the same. Exactly the same, Martha. Very good comparison from someone who I know is super knowledgeable about buttons, and I bet you have a ton of cloisonné buttons. 
but yeah, look up cloisonne too. Martha uh, spelt it out there. That's an interesting comparison because that is a perfect metaphor. You are creating a fence around something and then you are pouring the color into it or hooking the color into it. And it fills that shape, just like paint by number, just like cloisonne. Um, interesting. Good one, Martha. Your brain works so, so well. Your biologist, right? So that can be expected. Linda, good. Yep, everyone's saying that's a great comparison. Penny, you love cats and you need to look up Happy DeFranza because she does the kind of cats that you love. They, I would say they're like Laurel Birch cats, but I think, um, I think Happy predates Laurel Birch, but um, you, you get a lot of Laurel, Laurel Birch stuff in the early 80s, but uh, Happy DeFranza stuff's a little bit earlier. They're, they're stylized in, um, they're equally stylized, in other words, not realistic, but they, you can tell. If we did a quiz, which is a Laurel Birch cat, which is a Happy DeFranza cat, you would get 100 on it. Because as soon as you know what Laurel Birch cats look like, they all look the same. And as soon as you know what Happy DeFranza cats look like, they all look the same. They're super, super, super fun to hook. Uh, they're hard to find on eBay and stuff, so if you're interested in her, I know she still sells, um, gosh, I don't remember which one it is, so I don't want to say the wrong one, but if you Google Happy to Friends, you'll see her patterns are still out there. I have a few, too, that I'm going to list soon, um, so that is a to-be-continued. Oh, thank you, Midnight Hazel. I try, I try to put forward things that are interesting. See, we all brainstorm, and it gets more interesting. Oh, thank you so much. Um, is it going to be punch needle embroidery or rug punch? Um, um, privies and uh, prims. If you're talking about this, the um, um, I don't want to say it wrong again. I keep it's a hard name, Nasa. I've never heard the name before, and it's so pretty. If you mean um, Nasa's pieces, she already sells the kits for these in her Etsy shop, which is. Tapestry Needle Felt in Bradford, Vermont. She already sells the stuff to do this as um, uh, with, the with the roving as the punch, uh, not punch needle, um, felting, like using a needle to felt. But I'm going to be introducing these into the Ribbon Candy Hooking Shop as designs to rug hook or punch needle, uh, like either Russian punch or Oxford punch, so different. So these already exist for felting, and they're there. And if you love them and you love felting, you should shop her right now. Um, but we will be also introducing them as hooking and punching patterns for those of you that only like to hook and punch and maybe want it on a larger scale. So that is a to be continued. That's certainly coming later this week and over the weekend. A uh, same DeFranza that made rug hooks. You know what? I don't know, Debbie. I mean, it's got to be. So I'm going to say yes because it's got to be. But I don't have any of her hooks. Now that you say that, I remember seeing hooks that say DeFranza, but I've never had the opportunity to buy one. I'd like to buy one just because I love her. I would assume her hooks, unless she did them in different sizes, would be for smaller strips. Um, and I would probably still use my giant primitive coarse hook anyway. Um, but it might be that her hooks have a smaller crook because she only did uh, fine strips, like smaller, smaller strips. Interesting, I completely forgot. We'll have to Google DeFranza hooks. It's got to be the same person because she was well ensconced um, in the 80s, 90s. Happy DeFranza was a, a huge name in rug hooking. Um, and I still consider her a huge presence in rug hooking because I feel like her work is eternal um, and should be looked at more often. She did a lot with Rug Hooking Magazine, too. So it's easy to find her. There's not a huge amount of information online. But if you look at your old Rug Hooking Magazines, you'll find her again and again and again. She was very, very busy with commissions and stuff for much of her career. So she wasn't always putting out tons of commercial patterns. She was just working, head down working. Um, so running kind of parallel to what other artists have done during the same time period. Thank you so much, Kathleen. It's so funny you said that because I switched out of my tie-dye sweatshirt like one minute before the show, and that's why I was worried about this area and struggling with stuff like this because I just changed. But it goes beautifully um, with this piece. Yes, I'm going to hold it right next to me while I log out. I'm going to say have a great afternoon, everybody. We ran a little bit over. I'm so Green Mountain has DeFranza Designs. Thank you, Penny. Green Mountain has the DeFranza Designs, which makes a lot of sense because I think she's in Vermont. Um, interesting. So really good information. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. I think book being reviewed tomorrow is rug. I'm sorry, Sheila. The book being reviewed tomorrow is rug punching. It's this new book that just came out, Punch Needle uh, Rug Hooking Magazine. If you're part of their club, you get first whack um, at their books. So when there is a new book, they just send it to you. They charge you and send it to you. It comes super fast. This one just came yesterday in the mail. So I'm going to be reviewing this tomorrow. 
showing you a couple of the little projects in here that I think are really, really good. And then we're going to be reviewing this punch needle book tomorrow by Simone uh, Voivoden, Voivode, Voivoda. Um, that's a tough one. I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to stay on for a minute so I don't get cut. I will see you on Zoom. Remember to look on this thread for Zoom or on our Facebook group, uh, Rogue Cooking and Punch Needle Club. And I will see you for Zoom tomorrow or I will see you on Thursday morning at 1130 still because it's still March um, for coffee time. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, Betty's on.